Good morning. This is Introduction to Algebra. We're going to do a little review of uh, several of you have said, Mr. I'm still struggling with surface area or volume. And so we're going to do a few of those problems before we do our lesson today. First, um, it would help you a lot if you would draw this and do it on your paper with me. Don't just listen to me, do it with me. Okay, so if you have to pause the video so you can draw this, that's perfectly fine. Okay, and I'll give you a second there to give you a pause. Okay, now hopefully you took time to go on and draw all of them so it's a little easier for you to see. Now, let's look at this first one. We're going to find the volume of this diagram. It's not a simple box. It's not a simple prism. So we have to look at it. First of all, how do you find volume of anything? You say volume equals the total area times the height. What are my areas in this? For some of you, that's the basic problem. You're not dividing them down correctly. You have a semicircle. If you put dotted lines right there, now you have a rectangle and a triangle. Now I know how to, and you know how to find the area of a semicircle, of a rectangle, and a triangle. So if we could do all three of those little bitty parts, then we have our total area. So the area of our semicircle, plus the area of the rectangle, plus the area of the triangle. Find those, add them together, and then multiply by the height. Now let's break it down one more time. How do you find the area of a semicircle? Well, you say pi times radius square divided by two. To find the area of the rectangle, we're simply gonna say length times width. To find the area of the triangle, we're gonna say base times height divided by two. Put all of that inside brackets, because you have to solve that, add them together, then multiply, all right, by the height. So now let's do this. Pi is 3.14. The radius of our semicircle is one. It's already right there for you. Okay, the radius is one, so it's radius squared. Now we're going to say the length and the width of our rectangle. Well, it is um, two up here at the top, okay? And at the bottom, it says this line is three. But remember, this much of it belongs to the triangle, which is one. So I have to say three minus the one, so this line is just a two. Now look at your triangle. What's your base? The base is one. The height is gonna be the same as this dotted line, which is what? Okay, well we know it's two. How do we know that it's two? This radius from here up is one. The radius from here down is one. So that makes the diameter two. If this side is two, this side is also two. So that's where that number came from. And then we're gonna divide by two. Then we're gonna look in our book, because Mrs. Turner forgot what it was. Um, about our height. I don't remember, I don't see it. So I'll just make up one. Let's say that it is, it is two, okay? All right, now, let's do this. We have one squared, which is one. So one times 3.14, which is 3.14, divided by two. So we're gonna say two goes into three one time, two goes into 11 five times, two goes into 14 seven, okay? So, so far, this one equals out to be 1.57. Now we're gonna say two times two is four. <coughs> we're gonna say two, one times two is two, two divided by two is one. And we're gonna multiply that by two for the height. So now we're gonna go over here, we're gonna say one, point, one times four is four. So now four times 1.57. So we're gonna say four times seven is 28. Four times five is 20, plus the two we carry is two. Carry the two, four times one is four, plus the two we carry is six. So it's 6.28. We're gonna take that, multiply it by our height now. So two times eight is 16. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Two times six is 12. So the volume is 12.56. What's our label? Well, remember, this is area, so we're gonna say this is square centimeters. 
This is just a height, and it's also in centimeters. So my answer then is gonna be cubic centimeters, okay? Let's look at this diagram. If you've not drawn it, draw it on your paper. It's simply a circle that has a radius of two and the height of one. We wanna find in this case, the surface area. Now, before we do that, this is nothing more than this, just my cylinder is taller. We're gonna find the area of the base. That's the area of this round circle, okay? The top and the bottom are the same, correct? Okay, since they are the same and we're finding surface area, that's why we're gonna multiply by two. One for the top, one for the bottom. Okay, so our top and our bottom have the same surface area. Then we have to find the area of the rectangle. And Mrs. Turner, there's no rectangle in that shape. Of course there is. Remember, let's get a piece of paper here. If I take this paper and I wrap it around my cylinder, the, I can't measure this real well. What I can do is cut this and say, okay, if I lay it out, it's a rectangle. Okay, so that's where we get the measurement of the rectangle. It's the distance. If I were to cut this down and open it up, it would be the shape of a rectangle, all right? Now, when I find the, the, that rectangle or the distance around that cylinder, how do I do that? I say pi times diameter times the height, okay? The height, when you think about a rectangle, you think length times width. Well, that's what the pi times diameter is giving us. It's giving us the width. The height will be the same as the length, okay? Now, we're gonna go through this. So for our surface area, let me erase a little bit of this. I don't wanna crash into them. Okay, so we have the surface area equals two times pi times radius squared. Well, the radius is two, so we're gonna say two squared here, okay? times pi times the diameter, the diameter of this is gonna be four. The height is gonna be one, okay? So now I'm gonna say two squared is four, okay? So now I have two times pi times four times, we have four times one is four put times pi, so we're gonna have four pi here. Now. Notice I'm not, I'm not solving the pi yet. I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna say this is all multiplying. Two times pi times four, so this becomes eight pi times four pi. I can combine eight pi and four pi to get what? 12 times pi. 